Hi, my name's Emma and let's talk spooky stuff. Let me ask you, what does it mean to be lucky? If you get a job promotion, is that lucky? Is it luck? Or did you earn it? And if a stranger tries to break into your house every night trying to kill you, is that luck? Are you really lucky? Or is it the complete opposite? The synopsis to 2020 horror thriller Lucky states that the film is about May, a writer who suspects someone is breaking into her home night after night, and those around her refuse to indulge in her paranoia, leaving May to take matters into her own hands. In reality, this film is so much more. Lucky explores how we as a society normalize violence and what happens when we question that. Directed by Natasha Kamani and written by and starring Bria Grant as May, Lucky is a look into the home intruder nightmare with a unique twist. May is stalked by a masked man in her home whose visits become more frequent as she starts to question what's real and what it all truly means. The film was inspired by a real life event that the writer had experienced and how she navigated through the justice system, friends and the fallout after dealing with a stalker. She was struck by the reaction she got from other women when confiding in them with the situation and how they immediately understood, accepting it as if it was a normal part of a woman's life. Off the bat, the film presents itself as something different, and our first hint into Descent comes from May's reactions. This is Ted. Leave a message after the beep. Ted, you can't just leave me here, come back. For once, we see a horror protagonist react to the absurd circumstances with the correct amount of confusion. Instead of quickly accepting the fact that she is under attack and no one seems to be responding, she shakes the foundation and, well, freaks the hell out. Out. This gives the film a point of difference. May is a real and relatable horror character. Bria said in an interview that she had with Dread Central that she wrote May with a complicated backstory. She did this because she didn't want to play the perfect final girl who does everything right. She wanted to create a character that felt flawed and made mistakes. I believe in doing so, she created a character that we can see ourselves in, which is extremely important to the story's foundation. As the film continues, the play on this horror trope ties into the story. While others aren't reacting to the wicked world around them, May is asking questions and swinging hammers in hopes of uncovering the truth. I'm in danger from the man that comes to my house every night to try to kill me. May refuses to accept everyone else's lack of empathy and not only learns to defend herself, but does so kicking and screaming. Another film that feels familiar in this aspect is Unsane, a film about a woman who is also trapped in circumstances beyond her control and in doing so, she loses her control and her whole identity is undermined. The film is about the physical threat, but there's also psychological damage, which is much worse. But in lucky the devil's in the details because it's not just the intruder that keeps the audience on their toes, it's the intricate details. Everything is off from the objects around the home to reflections, and as the film continues, these aspects seem to be saying something on their own. While we're focusing on the details, let's talk about the amazing cinematography and sound design. It was hard not to be struck by the sound of the film, particularly in the action survival scenes, where it felt exaggerated in a sitcom way, almost like going through the motions. Composer Jeremy Suckerman also took out any of the organic sounds that were made by the masked stalker, adding a layer of uncanny to his performance. The cinematography plays into the decline of madness within the film, starting off feeling very commercial and normal in terms of framing, lighting, and stylization. But as the film goes on, it dips into a unique use of lighting and at its peak, some very intense, dreamy, 
stylized sequences. The film manages to twist the thrilling physical horror of a home invasion with a movie that spirals into something else completely, letting the audience guess what's happening up until the final moments and then of course leaving them to pick up the pieces as the credits roll. Let me warn you, it's not a neat film. There are no obvious answers. It's a heavy-handed mix of symbolism and dialogue that reveals the terrifying truth about our comfort in this mad world. The directors stated that they welcome all conversations and interpretations of this film because Bria's script did not present any type of resolution or answer to the problem May is presented with. It's meant to be a conversation starter. She also stated that Lucky is an entryway to a larger conversation and larger story. The film is about going deeper through the looking glass and taking the time to view the world that we accept as normal. I think a lot of people are going to find this film frustrating. Its ambiguous journey will have audiences split for sure, but it kept me on my toes during the entire journey, cringing at purposely insensitive dialogue and getting frustrated at May's world and how people interacted with her, which of course is maybe why I feel like I could relate to May's struggle. And I think that's it. If it connects to your story, you may feel yourself being moved by Lucky. And if it doesn't, you might find yourself being lucky that you can't relate. Lucky is now streaming on Shudder. Obviously, I highly recommend it, but Again, it's not for everyone, it is ambiguous. I thought it was the perfect marriage of psychological themes, also strong metaphors, and then with a little bit of action, traditional intruder horror themes going on. I'm giving this one a seven out of 10. I was pleasantly surprised. I knew that the film wasn't the normal intruder storyline, they'd kind of hinted at that, but I had no idea where it was gonna go or how far it was gonna go. For scare, I give it a three out of 10. I don't think it's scary. There is obviously a little bit of violence, um, but nothing too brutal. And everything is, again, heavy metaphors and not really shown. And for originality, I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. I thought it was a particularly original spin on many aspects of horror. And I just love the personal story that's attached to it, or I like, you know, the way they translated that. Uh, I want to hear what you think about the film though. Have you seen Lucky on Shudder? Shudder? <laughs> let me know down below in the comments. Also, let me know what you think of Bria Grant. Uh, I think she's great. I just watched The Stylist, which I'm going to do a Patreon video for that, but I thought uh, she was great in that and she's great in this. And I'm really excited to see uh, what else she's going to do for modern horror. I'm very impressed that she's in all of these independent horror films. So big thumbs up from me. Um, and I can't wait to hear from you guys. I can't wait to read your comments, so put them down there. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For those who don't know, my name is Emma. I'm also known as Spooky Astronauts here on YouTube. I do two videos every single week talking about horror movies, talking about thrillers, and giving you so much to put on your to watch list. I can't wait to talk to you all very soon. Stay safe and stay spooky.